My name is Leah Terrigan Zeller, and this is Gender and Religion Today. The views of religions and of religious believers about sex really range widely, from giving sex and sexuality a rather negative connotation to believing that sex is the highest expression of the divine. In what follows, we have asked five different people from different faiths to answer the following questions. So I think in Judaism, I really feel a discrepancy between the stated intent and the reality. The stated intent is that Judaism really values physicality, the body, food, drink, enjoying the world. And being an aesthetic like a monk is not a Jewish ideal. However, the reality is that sex is rarely talked about. And um, sometimes they'll say, well, that's all going to be left for the conversation you'll have in your pre-wedding classes. But actually, my own experience was that even when I got to those pre-wedding classes, sex as a topic was completely avoided. Uh, Islamically speaking, sex is a very sacred thing. For example, it's in the Quran that God beautified sexual activity, you know, between a man and woman. But the caveat is just that it is between married couples, you know, outside of marriage is when things get, you know, forbidden or haram or, you know, you get into trouble there. My Christian faith tradition, I think, has an interesting in-between situation when it comes to sex, sex and sexuality. So there is the official line, you shouldn't have um, sex before marriage, and you should only have, like, be with somebody um, properly and, and have sex with them as well if you want to be with them, want to have children with them, want to have a family with them. But ideally, you would first get married and then you would meet, move together. There's a huge change in that in the last 20 to 30 years. I genuinely had faith to actually talk to my minister about it. And I was asking the priest in my congregation, so how should I approach this thing? And I think he gave me a really, really good advice, which was whatever you do, take it slowly. Um, just take each step, whatever you're doing, and take a lot of time with that. Um, you, will, you will benefit from that. And I think this is actually an advice that I find very useful. So sex and sexuality is a big issue within evangelical Christianity. And speaking specifically about white evangelical Christianity, there is a strong tradition of promoting sexual abstinence. I was missing, and I think we're missing that more broadly, if I may say, in society is, is apart from this, what Foucault calls kind of sciencia sexualis, kind of this, the science of sex, is what he calls the ars erotica, like the, the art of sex. And there's a lot of people who I then found out had really interesting thoughts about what respectful sexuality is, what obviously consent um, actually consists of, and one can make sure to be really respectful. What I would like Judaism to see offer on sex and sexuality is a Jewish sexual ethic. Teaching about what Judaism has to say about issues around, let's say, mutuality, consent, pleasure, gender differences, sex at different points in a couple's life, sex beyond marriage, sex with different partners, because Judaism has an awful lot to say about it. And unlike what we might anticipate, it's not all kind of strict medieval puritanical stuff. You know, I think a lot of things that we take for granted as like religious ideas are actually more cultural. Um, so unfortunately in Arab culture, there's a lot of like uh, shame around ideas of, of like sexuality. Mm. I never had any such conversations with either of my parents about my sexuality growing up. And I had to get most of that information outside of my family, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I, I do regret that. And I do think that is something that um, Muslim parents should be aware of and should be better at, you know, uh, discussing with their kids. We at our school actually didn't have any sex education. That wasn't something that was taught. Um, so we were taught privately by our families um, about sex just in terms of it being something that happens between a man and a woman within marriage. And there wasn't a lot of details given. Um, and there was this very strong emphasis on heterosexuality. The spiritual content and the spiritual context of uh, sex and sexuality, especially with regard to the mikvah, um, the ritual pool that women visit 
after menstruation. And the fact that there is a uh, ritual side to the sex uh, life of um, Orthodox Jews, I think, needs to be highlighted in terms of how it creates um, and uh, generates a relationship with God, uh, to include God in, in, in one's relationship 